Now we're getting into what most operators really like to talk about, and that's the aircraft, the sensors, the accessories, and what they can actually do with this equipment. So let's take a pause from certifying your pilots and discuss the equipment out there. First off, Makatawa Unmanned Systems is an official authorized DJI Enterprise dealer. Now what that means is the company like ours is has the up-to-date information from the actual factory and we also give after-sales support unlike anybody else that is not an authorized dealer. Now that's a big deal because a lot of times a sub-dealer or a non-dealer can sell you a UAS a DJI product but once they get it to you that's all they're gonna do with it. Now an authorized dealer has systems and mechanisms set up to supply you with support specifically for public entities. We are to give you an enhanced support if your aircraft goes down, isn't functional, and get it repaired, all those great things we can help you with. We are also the most knowledgeable about the product because we go to additional training. So if you go away from an authorized dealer, your equipment could take get months to repair. You're going to be in through uh, a different channel uh, for repairs which could cause even more heartache for you so we highly recommend if you're going to buy a DJI product do it with an authorized dealer now when looking at the equipment there are three main concepts that we need to discuss and you need to discuss with your decision-making authorities first what do we want to do with this aircraft you always start with the end in mind what do you want to do to conduct different types of missions? Do we want search and rescue? Do we want to conduct, uh, detect chemicals? Do we want to just give an aerial common operational picture? What do we specifically want to do? In some cases, you might be inspecting power lines for your uh, local municipalities utilities company, uh, but you're the fire department. That's something that you need to look at to de help determine what types of equipment you need. From knowing what you're going to do, then you can start to consider these three things. The aircraft itself, the sensors, and the accessories. Now the aircraft, the aircraft can range from anywhere between a good quality aircraft that's going to fly and not fly away on you, could range between $1,000 and $12,000 just for the platform. They range in capability and lift capabilities. To know what you want to do with this aircraft can help someone like Makatawa guide you through the best solutions for you. Some aircraft like the Inspire 1 or 2 have unique landing gear that can be great for water rescues. While the M200 series carries more sensors and make better search and rescue aircraft. Next is the sensors. There are three main types of sensors though there are more coming out. The three main types are the RGB cameras thermal imagery, and some sort of zoom camera. Now the RGB comes in different pixel amounts for clarity and cine cinematography capabilities. D are you going to use these for promotional videos, things like that? Maybe you want a higher, uh, better, better pixel camera. If not, you don't need as much. Thermal cameras come in different lenses. This is based on the different types of missions you might be doing. So if you're inspecting power lines you want to stay farther away from power lines but you still want clarity so you're gonna have a different lens if you're doing search and rescue you need a broader width in order to cover more space you're gonna need a different lens on your thermal camera so therefore you have uh, lens you also have the amount of pixels so lower the pixels the the less expensive it is the more pixels the better clarity but again the more expensive it could end up being and then you also have uh, the Hertz how, how often does it take uh, the image so you have 30 and 9 so again depending on how you actually plan on utilizing this equipment it will determine what types of thermal cameras you need and lastly uh, DJI has come out with the Zenmoose Z30 which is the 30 times zoom camera uh, is, is another great awesome tool that you can put in your toolkit.
Finally, there are numerous accessories for your aircraft. There are tethers, parachutes, cases, drop systems, ground control points, uh, live streaming, pilot management systems. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a little bit of time to discuss a few of these to give you some ideas of what's out there on the aftermarket. First up, we got Edgy B's First Responder. This is a sweet app that you can get. Uh, it's a yearly subscription. Uh, you get it on your tablet. Uh, what it does is it overlays your GIS information with the actual flight video. So as you can see in this demo here, we've got different uh, Spring Street, uh, Main Avenue, where I'm located, uh, where my home reference is, and then where what other users are. You can also use live streaming that's coming out for this, as well as an app that you can put on your first responder uh, phone and they can actually see the individual on the ground. So it's pretty sweet. This is called Edgy B's First Respond. Next up, we have ParaZero. It's a parachute for your UAS. Uh, so being that, you know, it might cost anywhere between twenty and thirty thousand uh, dollars. A parachute that costs a couple thousand might be a good added value to your system. So as you can see, especially if you're flying in populated areas, uh, it's it's an extra precaution that you can have on it, especially in terms of a public program to ensure the public supports your UAS program. You can talk about how you have a parachute on your UAS. Finally, let's discuss some other considerations that you're going to want to think about before you actually jump both feet into the water and start your program. First off, what types of ground school are you going to want to do? So ground schooling, there's a couple different ways. You can do online or you can do in person. Now the online versions uh, are easy to do, self-study. It, it gives you a little more flexibility when you're going to do it, obviously. And, uh, and then the in-person one, it can be a quicker uh, one to three day course, depending on how long and how you split it up. And it gives you the ability to get it done a little bit faster, maybe study a little bit afterwards and go take your, uh, your tests. Now, uh, what's coming up with the FAA certification that everyone needs to understand is the FAA is constantly looking at different ways of, of training and what they need to improve on this process. So there are organizations out there like the Unmanned Safety Institute uh, that, that certify you on the safety standards. Now what this does for you after a while with low insurance uh, will ensure that your pilots are really truly trained uh, on, on the safety of using aircraft. Next, let's look up flight training. Uh, there's different ones that you can put together. Uh, there's companies like Makatawa that will help you create a flight training program for your, your departments. Uh, there's the basic flying. So how do I go left, right? How do I pivot? How do I go forward, back, up, and down? That one's pretty easy. Then you've got a safety training. How do I actually fly at night? What does that look like? What considerations do I have to do at night in order to get an FAA approved, uh, approved waiver? So those types of sa uh, safety trainings uh, are also out there. And then you've got the advanced pilot training. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has come out with a training course that Makatawa has. Uh, it's completely portable. We can bring it out to a department and, and you can send your pilots through this to determine their actual skill set and how good they are at flying this aircraft. Now, this can determine uh, what the pilot can actually fly. So a lot of departments start with a lower classified air, uh, aircraft that's a little bit cheaper, and then based on their training, they move them up from, uh, let's say, a $1,000 aircraft to a $5,000 aircraft because they have a little more skill, they're more uh, risk diverse, and they can say, well, in this case, uh, this individual has a lot of skill in flying these things, and they won't necessarily, they, they'll take the necessary precautions to make ensure that this thing doesn't crash. 
We also have local concerns. Uh, a lot of local populations uh, support the programs, but in some cases you could have issues. So that's one thing you want to think about is being open to the public. Let them understand what you're actually going to use these aircraft for. Do some hearings, uh, public hearings maybe. Get some feedback. And then uh, obviously you want to talk to the press. The press has been very good about uh, doing UAS programs, especially for search and rescue operations. You want to think about your chain of evidence. So how are you going to take this data? Where are you going to take this data and how are you going to take pictures? Where are you going to move it through uh, the space, uh, investigation and all that? Uh, the aircraft will put your, your data on a data card. Uh, one of the departments discussed with me that you're going to want to buy a lot of data cards. Uh, because as soon as you get that data on there, it goes into the evidence bag and uh, you don't get it back. So that's one thing you need to look at. And then uh, next, let's talk about insurance concerns. Uh, there's two types of insurance that you can look at, uh, haul and then liability. A lot of departments uh, self-insure, so their liability, you don't have to, they don't necessarily think about. They'll talk to their lawyers uh, to make sure the liability is covered, uh, but they won't necessarily go to an insurance agency. But the uh, haul insurance is out there. So uh insurance companies will insure your aircraft and your sensors uh, as combined which is a pretty nice little package that they put together so if if something happens you pay a nice deductible and uh and get a new aircraft so haul uh, haul and, and liability insurance things to think about next we have financing so are we going to go with some grants? Do we need to look at grants? Uh, are we in a budget cycle that we can afford it? Uh, or there's, there's other mechanisms like the Drone Financing Unlimited uh, that, su that supplies uh, funding for local municipalities to purchase their aircraft uh, and sensors on a finance um, type uh, arrangement. So you purchase it, do a small monthly payment, and you get your aircraft right away. Lastly, uh, look at certifying agencies and certified programs. Uh, Makatawa works through these with you. Uh, if you give us a call, we'll talk through you. There's different ones for uh, public safety. There's two different entities right now that, that just came out with their certifying program. Uh, we can help you through those processes. There's also others that are coming out uh, through through the U, AUVSI, um, which which will work with other certifying agencies that will help uh, ensure that your program is, is meeting the highest of standard, which could relate back to the local concerns and whether or not your pilots are good or not, um, and then the flight training. It all it all plays together real nicely. Uh, if you get a real good program going. All right, that concludes this short brief on things to consider when starting a UAS program. If you got any concerns, questions, please give us a call uh, at 833-376-6370. You can call myself uh, or any one of our other representatives, and we'd be happy to support you. You can also email us at info at makatawaus.com. Or you can email myself at jlatchaw, J-L-A-T-C-H-A-W, at makatawaus.com. I'll be more than happy to give you any more information that you need uh, in order to help you develop your program or even sell your program to, to your local uh, decision-making authorities and give you some ideas on how to do that. So feel free to contact me at any time and... Hope to hope to get you flying soon.